Hi, this is Alex Designman. As you probably know, I have a few courses on Udemy about Katia V5 in the mechanical and electrical field, where I have now over 11,000 students. And I receive a lot of questions on Udemy and also on LinkedIn about various topics in uh, Katia V5. And from the electrical design courses, I received quite a few questions and many of them there were about cable, harness or wiring, bending radius. The main question was students asking how do you calculate the bending radius for uh, cables. So obviously I do that in uh, my courses. I show a lot of examples and we do a lot of projects there. So the students asking me probably they didn't start the course yet or they weren't yet in my course or they didn't do all the videos and so on. So I was thinking to make a video to kind of clear it all and uh, correct the question that uh, you have to ask and uh, get an answer for. The correct question it's not how do you calculate the bending radius because that's very simple and that's done by Katia V5 or by the CAD software automatically. And so the correct question is how do you find out the bending radius and uh, I'm going to show you immediately how do you do that. Before that let's uh, set up a few terms in here so a few words that uh, we use in electrical harness design so here we have a cable so this can be a cable or a bundle of cables or a bundle of wires so the main parameter of a cable or a bundle of, of wires it's the diameter and when we want to discuss about bending radius we have another parameter which is the cable axis or the neutral fiber or the neutral axis or the curve inside the cable so it can be called in different ways and uh, when we bend the cable the axis will still be there only that it will be bent so it will be like a bent curve inside the middle of the cable and this is imaginary because if you have a cable or a, or a bundle of wires on the table in front of you it's not going to have an axis you're going to have to imagine that going through the middle of the cable but in Katia V5 it's going to have that it's going to be a curve right there in the middle of, of the cable so that's called axis bending radius so this is the bending radius at the axis of the cable then we have the internal bending radius so this is the bending radius on the internal side of the cable when it's bent so it's the small bending radius and we also have the external bending radius which is outside of the curvature of the cable when you bend it so this is least important or least used the most used are the middle one and the small one and the bending radius it comes from the fact that uh, tangent with the bending radius we can have a circle so it's going to be the radius of that circle and the same for the internal we are going to have a circle tangent with that curvature so that's going to be our bending radius is going to be the radius of this circle so there is a relationship between the bending radius of the cable and the cable diameter this is how it's calculated by using uh, this formula so the formula more exactly is the cable bending radius equals multiple of cable diameter so this can be two times three times four times and uh, even less it can be one time 1.5 times and so on so the cable bending radius this is an example of a parameter cable bending radius equals two times the diameter so let's say you have this value that you have to use and i'm going to tell you immediately where this comes from so if this is your parameter cable bending radius equals two times the diameter so it means that the here we have the circle which is tangent with the axis so let's say we are talking about the bending radius at the axis of the cable if the cable bending radius is two times the diameter so this is the diameter so it means that two times the value the diameter is going to be in the radius so that's four times for the whole diameter of the circle but we use bending radius we do not use bending diameter so if the diameter of the cable is 10 millimeters then we are going to have 20 millimeters as the bending radius and 40 millimeters the diameters of the circle that is tangent with the axis at the bending 
And this is the main answer to the question. The bending radius value is provided by manufacturer. So the bending radius value of a cable, this can only come from the cable manufacturer. Not the supplier, not the vendor or the salesperson. It's only the manufacturer is the company that made that cable. Because those companies, they know what materials they used, they know what that cable is for, they made all the tests and they will have a data sheet where uh, they will write what is the maximum bending radius for that cable and other type of bending radiuses depending probably on the diameter. On bigger diameters you have bigger bending radius and smaller diameters you have a smaller bending radiuses. So the bending radius of a cable cannot be calculated. This is not something that you can calculate yourself. You need to find out what that is from a manufacturer. And this is because you don't know what materials they use to do that cable. So to ask how do you calculate the bending radius is to ask how do you calculate the melting temperature of metals. Well, it depends which metal are you talking about. Are you talking about aluminum? Are you talking about copper or steel? Which one? And if let's say you talk about aluminum, you cannot calculate the melting temperature. You need to melt it and record that temperature. So this is what companies do. They will bend that cable and they will see what is the most healthy bending radius that uh, the cable can take in a different kind of environments. The only problem comes when we, are, we talk about a bundle of wires that uh, you created. For example, inside the vehicle you can have a bundle of wires where uh, you have wires going from one device to another, from one sensor to another, so you together with uh, the EDS team have calculated what are the wires going to be from those devices and put them into a bundle you put tape around them and you just created a bundle of wires and cables so you have a bunch of wires in there all different from each other or different materials so now what is the bending radius that you use in Katia V5 for that bundle so those usually are set by the vehicle manufacturer so the vehicle so the manufacturer of the vehicle, they will set up a bending radius for the basic cables, so for, for the basic wires that they would use inside the vehicle. And of course that is based also on the bending radius that comes from the supplier and they do tests and uh, something like that. So that's again, that's something that you need to find out. It's something that you need to ask. And uh, it's the same for smaller bundles. You have a smaller bending radius, but if the diameter of the bundle increases by a lot then uh, you need to use a bigger bending radius and many times you also need to make a test meaning that uh, you need to get in contact with the manufacturing plant and uh, you need to tell them to make a piece of bundle of wires that uh, you have in your design so you can see together with the team how that bends and what is the problem there and usually those kind of uh, bundles they are uh, unique in the car in a vehicle so you might have in the cabin like a big bundle of wires that goes somewhere around there so this is because if you have a bundle of wires that is for example 50 millimeters in diameter that is going to be very hard to bend it's going to be pretty strong so even if you bend it it might break retainers in time or it might pull out retainers from the holes in the body and white it might break cable ties so that's why it needs to be careful or the operator will not be able to bend it so he can fix that inside the holes especially in the winter when uh, those harnesses are brought inside the manufacturing plant from a warehouse where it's cold so in that moment there are even more difficult to bend so if you never if you so this is something that you need to see in a manufacturing plant because I've seen many times in manufacturing plants they have heaters so they put the harness in front of the heater for a few minutes before they will start to mount it. Otherwise, it will be basically almost impossible to mount. And uh, one very important thing here, when you find out the bending radius value from the manufacturer, you also need to make sure that it's indicated on the data sheet or uh, ask which bending radius is used. So that has to be confirmed or communicated clearly. Because as we discussed, there are three bending radiuses here so you need to ask the manufacturer about the value that you see in the data sheet because in the data sheet you have value it says three times 
the diameter is the bending radius you need to ask which bending radius he's talking about so is the axis bending radius or is the internal bending radius because CATIA because CATIA V5 for example or any other CAD software it will calculate the axis bending radius but many times manufacturer manufacturers they will provide you the internal bending radius so this is because they cannot measure the axis bending radius because the cable is round so it's uh, physically very hard to measure that and to have precision so they will give you this bending radius and the idea here is that you need to confirm that with them you need to ask them because if the bending radius value is two times the diameter and they are referring to this one then in CATIA you have to put this one so you need to calculate this one which is going to have a different value as we can see here so if the cable manufacturer says that the cable bending radius is 1.5 times the diameter and it's referring to the internal bending diameter then this is not the value that you have to input in CATIA V5 or in any other CAD software because the CAD software will calculate this one so going from this one to this one you need to add another cable diameter to that as uh, you can clearly see here so this is 1.5 times the diameter for the internal and for the axis you're going to have two times the diameter so you're going to have to use two times in uh, CATIA V5 as a minimum bending radius diameter so this means that the bending radius in CATIA V5 is going to be bigger meaning that you need more space to bend that cable in CAD and when we have a bundle of wires even if we have the bending radius coming from the car manufacturers for, for the company that you're working for the bending radius value for bundle wires is established by car manufacturer let's say you have 1.5 times or 2 times and specialty cables must respect manufacturer bending radius anywhere will be placed so this means that if you have a bundle of wires and uh, the car manufacturer the company that you're working for says that the main bending radius for all the cables for all the bundles inside the vehicle it's uh, two times the diameter for small to medium cables so not for the big ones but inside your bundle you have one special cable let's say you have one coaxial cable that goes for an antenna so it's not a normal cable it's going to have it's going to be thicker it's going to have uh, different materials for the insulation is going to have screening like um, mesh inside the cable so it's going to have a different rigidity it's going to be hard to bend and uh, you need to check the data sheet for that cable from its manufacturer because that's a special cable created by a manufacturer that's not your uh, basic cable that's not your basic wire and uh, in data sheet you see in the data sheet you see that uh, the bending radius is five times for that specific cable or wire this means that you need to check in CATIA V5 that uh, your main bundle it will respect that uh, bend bending radius five times the diameter so you need to make those calculations otherwise you need to make that uh, bundle of wires accommodate that bending radius even if it's going to be bigger than two times that uh, you have the standard so the specialty cables come first so as you can see bending radius it's not a fixed science or a fixed number or a fixed formula you need to take every wire or every cable and to verify that uh, your design respects exactly what the data sheets of uh, those cables mention so this is what it means to be an electrical harness cut designer it's not only about CATIA V5 but it's more about accommodating all the parameters and the requirements that you have coming from uh, reality so now let's take a look uh, for a second in CATIA V5 just as an example here we have a bundle in CATIA V5 so this is has been designed right here in uh, on those two circles so this is a sketch with two circles and between them I added 40 millimeters and those are also constrained on the surface of this uh, solid here of this green solid so they can only move left and right they can now move up and down and uh, we have a constraint here so we have exactly 40 millimeters between the end points of the curve of the cable and inside here we have bend radius ratio it's two times the diameter and the diameter it's 10 millimeters 
So the band radius is 20 millimeters and the computed band radius that uh, it's shown right now here, you see it's uh, 20, so it's actually 19.952. So this is almost 20. So I'm going to input here straight band. So now computed band radius is 20, band radius ratio is two times. So let's say that this is what I have from the manufacturer and I know that uh, it's referring to the internal curve because this is what Katia V5 calculates. It does not calculate this one. And to prove that, it's very simple. I'm just going to position a sketch here on this surface. So the bending, so the cable bending radius was 20 millimeters. That means that the diameter of the tangent circle is going to be 40. So as you can see here, the tangent circle. So I'm going to position here uh, this one by hand. So you can see it's 40, it's just tangent with the curvature of the cable. So it's very simple to see this and to prove this. So this means that if you have two fixings, so let's say you have two fixings where you need to fix the cable, you have one here and one here, and you need to route your cable through those two fixings. You just need to calculate the distance between those two retainers from the central axis of the retainers depending how so it depends what the geometry of the retainer are going to be but the central axis exactly where uh, this axis comes here and here and the distance between them it has to be minimum the diameter of the circle tangent to the bending radius of the cable so that's the minimum i would uh, add more to that i would add at least 20 percent extra in this distance if i would be to require something from a mechanical designer that designs the part where I need to fix the cable. So I would do it way larger than this because maybe you need to add wires in the future. You never know what you need to add in this uh, bundle in the future. And it's the same if you have a 90 degree bend. So you have a retainer here and the retainer here. So you need to imagine the circle. So when you imagine the circle, you can see that this is the distance that you need to calculate. So it's the distance between the center of this retainer and the center of this retainer here. So this circle does not come here, but it ends here, something like this. So the diameter of the circle is the distance between this retainer and this retainer. So this is what you need to calculate in CAD. And of course, you need to design the bundle to see this, but to save time if you don't want to move retainers around until you get this bundle green and it's not red anymore this is how you start you just start with this distance and then of course this other distance from here to here so you need to incorporate this circle between those four axes and take those uh, distances and then of course you need to add more than that 20 30 percent as much as you can as much as you have available in a the 3d environment so this is everything i can say about uh, the bend radius of the cable right now if you have any more questions or uh, you think uh, there is something that i didn't cover just uh, leave a comment or uh, ask me on linkedin and maybe i can make uh, part two for uh, this video where i can cover anything else so i hope this was useful and see you in the next video